Hello! It's seven o'clock on Monday. Hooray! And I hope I'm in the right place. Hello. Is there anybody there? <laughs> Hi. I'm just waiting for a couple of people to say hello or to appear. Gemma Joy's watching, so I know I'm in the right place. Just let me know I am, Gem, because you know what I'm like. I could be anywhere. I could be really anywhere. <laughs> I think I've managed to get myself onto my laptop as well. Hi, Gemma. Hi. Thank you. Um, I think I've managed to get myself on there. Gosh, I'll meet myself coming back in a minute. <laughs> ah, it's lovely to um, to be here again. I, I For anybody who might have been um, on the website this morning, I gave a little um, live this morning. Hi, Pat. Um, a little live this morning to say... Uh, what we were doing tonight and to show you Primrose, which is just behind me there. So I hope you've managed to pop onto the website and download your pattern. And uh, tonight we're going to make it up. So um, so how's your day been? Somebody tell me how you... I'm in the right place. Thank you, Gemma. <laughs> I, I guessed as much with, uh, with a, a few um, people that I know names of coming in. So it's lovely. So uh, I've got Gemma. I've, I've seen Marilyn, Pat, Patricia Richardson, Margaret, hi Maggie, uh, Ellen, Shirley, Eileen, hi Dee. Um, yeah, lots of people uh, coming to say hello now. We've already got 78 people, so that's lovely. And uh, I'm not going to get round to saying um, all your names because I'll be here all night and then you'll be gone and I'll be making something on my own. So uh, Margaret Hamilton says hello to everybody. Good evening. Hi, Jackie Barber and Pauline. So, yeah, it's really great to um, to be here tonight. Um, I've had a really strange day. I had a busy morning. Uh, and then before you know it, it was time for me to have an appointment at two o'clock. I got back um, and uh, did some sewing and a bit of preparation for tonight. And here I am. It, I can't believe where the days are going. I seem to all I seem to do is get up and go to bed. Uh, it's just it's so silly, really, that they're going so quick. Um, but you know that's the same for everybody, I suppose, and everybody's busy and all that kind of thing. So um, yeah, so what have you been up to today? How's your weather been? Do you know what Friday it was gorgeous, and I thought we're going to have a lovely weekend and be able to walk the dogs by Saturday morning. Hi, Lynn. It was just chucking it down, blowing again freezing cold and we've had a weekend like that it's still blowing a gale I've been down I had to go right down into town today so I was right next to the seafront nearly got blown onto the beach and uh, yeah oh Joyce thank you very much that's very kind of you Joyce says she enjoys my demonstrations well you know I compared to Lizzie I'm a real novice but you know we get on together don't we we I can do it <laughs> um yeah, so, but it's been gorgeous again today, really sunny, but quite chilly. So I don't mind that, though. It's just I hate the rain. I can't bear it. But there we go. Um, so Sally says she has a perfect day at the, at the spa, only taken a, a year to get there. I know. Well, that's because the time goes so quick, Sally, and we're so busy. We don't get chance, do we? I can't I can't remember the last time I had a spa day. It was before COVID-19. So that makes it two and a half years doesn't it so um yeah so, so maybe you know next time you go sally you might invite me and i'll come along <laughs> you know if you need a friend and all that <laughs> so without going on too much then as we've had a couple of minutes already this is what we're making we are making um can you see the picture on there yeah we are making um primrose and Primrose is a beautiful box. I'll bring her down now and show her to you. Um, when, I, when I tilt the camera down, I'll show her to you because of the way she's made. It'll look better for you if I bring the camera down. I'm getting very jealous, you know, of everybody's um, new camera angles. And um, if you know, you know. But I am getting very jealous. So if you could have a word with the people concerned about their camera angles and that I need a little bit of um, tuition and some new cameras. Oh, you're up for it, Sally. That's brilliant. OK, I've got a date. <laughs> what would we talk about? Oh, now then. <laughs> we could talk about the weather. Yeah, I'm good at that. 
<laughs> you love that pretty yellow. Who is it that said that? I love that pretty yellow. Oh, Patsy, that's gorgeous, isn't it? And it just cheers us up after Christmas to think that the warmer um, days are coming and the lighter nights and things. Unless, of course, you happen to live down the other side of the world in Australia and New Zealand and different places. We have got viewers um, in that part of the world and they're just looking forward to winter. So, But their winter's not as bad as ours, I don't think. I don't know. So, so what I'll do is I'll tilt the camera down, enough of looking at me and more about looking at what we've come for. And uh, I shall chat to you as I'm going along. So let's see if I can get the camera angle right and then I'll grab a primrose for you. So going down, straightening up. How's that? My machine is a little bit in the way, I feel. No, it's not my machine, it's my MacBook. Let's turn that out of the way. I thought it didn't look like a sewing machine. Now I don't know where my sewing machine should be. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> That's fine. Hi, Karen and Jackie and Helena. It's lovely to see you all anyway. We've got lots of people watching, so that's great. So I'm going to um, find Primrose. I'll, um, I'll take her flowers away. I presume you guessed that they were only, um, they were only artificial flowers. I don't have a garden that has all that that much in it to be honest. There we go. So this is Primrose. You can see that inside she's just a pale lemon but outside she's this gorgeous um, lovely lemon colour with um, pink butterflies. It's gorgeous isn't it? Really lovely fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear her apart. Now you know don't panic. I'm just going to take her apart. So I'm going to take these straps off one at a time. So I'm just going to take that one off and then that one, go around, and then that one, and then that one, and that's what happens. So that's how she's constructed. So can you see that there? I have to push my my uh, computer away a little bit more, sorry. I'm, um, there we go, there we go. How's that? I've got this, this huge long desk, huge, and tiny little space that I work in and uh, I remember Lizzie saying that once as well that we all seem to get into a tiny little space because um, that's where we're most comfortable so so what we've um, what we've done then is we've just flattened her out and what I can do now is I can turn her in the other way so if I keep these straps on the outside like this I can pull that up and that one can go on to there. The same as this one. Pop these inside this time. So straps always on the outside but sometimes the ends go outside and if you turn it the other way the ends go inside. I think I'm making it more, more, look more complicated than it actually is. In the end it's a cross with four straps and there she is the other way around. So if you want to put pretty fabrics outside and inside you've got a lovely reversible box so so I'm going to turn her back the other way and then we'll start making now it doesn't really matter which way obviously what we can do then if we take all these off is just fold her flat pop the straps inside and there she can go in a drawer out of the way. So I'll leave her like that and we'll make her back up in a bit. Um, so what we've got then is I've ditched the yellow for tonight, even though I love it and I had my nails done in it. You see, you can see that, can't you? Um, I'm going to ditch the yellow tonight and we're going to have, I'm not sure which one of these to have on the outside and on the inside, but then see, it doesn't matter because it's reversible, so it doesn't matter. This one I've already cut out. The pattern tells you um, to cut uh, a certain size all in the pattern. And if you haven't downloaded the pattern, you'll find it on the website. If you're a Platinum member, you get it for free. If you don't know about Platinum, I'd like you to ask me about it. All right, so if you're a person um, that's part of the MIM group or is, is first time for tonight and you don't know anything about platinum or gold membership, then 
please comment and say, what are you talking about? Or some such question. And then I can tell you about it. But if you're platinum, your MIM pattern will be included and you'll have been able to download that from yesterday. And if you're not platinum, if you're a member or if you're not a member of any a group of Lizzie's online, apart from making it Monday, you'll find the patterns at £1.25. Now, what a cinch is that? It's absolutely just amazing, isn't it? So if you've bought your pattern and you've downloaded it and you're sewing along, then this is what we're going to do. So we've cut a square, basically, like this one. I'll pop that to one side. And this is a square. It doesn't look like a square because I've got it pinned. And then we're going to cut our corners out. So I'm going to grab my, my square ruler and we're going to cut the corners out. Now, if you want to cut the corners out separately so you know that you're not cutting the wrong fabric, then you do that. Um, that's what I did on the first one. I, st I still feel that you're a little bit wonky. Never mind. Do you mind, wonky? You can all sit with your heads on the side. <laughs> um, but I'm going to actually... It, you have to be careful when you come to this corner if you're cutting up here with your rotary cutter that you don't carry on cutting into there and then we're cutting along there so we're going to cut a, a square out of each of the corners so just go gently i've pinned it together so that it doesn't move and if you don't quite get it right i tend to use my scissors if only i could find my scissors i could use it there it is you didn't all shout at me then, did you, to say it's behind you? Because this is pantomime season. You know that, don't you? <laughs> platinum is great. Platinum is fab. But it doesn't look like there's nobody that knows about it. So that's fine. Any of the memberships, the old gold, the new gold, the, the platinum, they're all such fantastic value for money. But we're going to do a little maths test in a minute. I've got a little maths test for you. Now, I'm going to have to say this quietly. If the boss is in the house, then I'm going to pretend she's not. But if she's not in the house, we can talk about maths because she doesn't know I'm going to talk about it. Because, as we all know, well, as she keeps telling us, I don't know whether we all know, she's not very good at maths, she says. So we're going to talk about maths in a minute. Oh, she's in the house. Oh, she's put what on there? Goodness me. Goodness me, I'm in trouble now, guys. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble now with the boss. Oh, Lord. Maths. Yes, maths with a double F. Not very good at English either. <laughs> so anyway, we'll talk about maths in a minute. So as I'm on the geometry here, because you can see that I've made this perfect cross. All right. So that's my, I'm going to treat this as my lining. Okay. So that's going to be on the inside. And this is my outside. So I've already done that one to save time because watching somebody cut, you know, might be fascinating to some people. But, you know, it's what floats your boat, isn't it? And then the next step then is to give us our stabilisation so that we know that those sides are actually going to stand up. Now, we don't want anything that's cardboard. We don't we want it still to be pliable but we don't want anything too soft either, or it won't stand. So the pattern will tell you, this is <clears throat> single-sided Bosal foam. You can use any foam you want. You can use, if you want to use double-sided, then you can, but it's difficult because we're going to put this right sides together and we don't want to stick until afterwards. So I would recommend single-sided. This is a bosal in our form, and it's lovely to work with. Even though it's quite thick, I've got cat's hairs everywhere, I'm so sorry. Even though it's quite thick, it's very easy to sew through. So your machine will cope with it fine. Judy is a brand new gold member. She's a week old. Well, happy birthday for last week, Judy. I'm going to upgrade to platinum. It looks so much better for a little bit extra. Well, that's the maths we're going to do. So hold that thought. We'll do that maths in a minute, but I can't do two things at once. Well, I can, but I can't do them either very well. OK, so what we're going to do then is we're going to I'm going to turn my iron on and we're just going to adhere these to the um, the back. Now, you'll see I've only put four on. And I've done that for a reason, because these four are all the same size. 
and you'll find <clears throat> that this one here that I've got ready to put in the middle is slightly smaller. So have a look at your pattern and make sure you read that twice or three times so you get it right because you'll find yourself otherwise cutting it down. Right, so can you see what I'm doing there? I'm hoping you can. I'm going to put one of these on the outside to line it right up. I haven't made them any smaller. There's no quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to line them up. Now, this has got a little bit of roughness on this side. That's the glue and that's smooth on the other side. So we're going to obviously use our fabric to protect our iron from the glue and glue it on. Now, this doesn't take as long. You'd think it would, wouldn't you? But it doesn't take as long to stick as something like H250. It's only about five or six seconds. Um, whereas H250 I think is 12 or something like that. Um, so this doesn't take too long, but you do need to make sure that you've got it um, well stuck down or it'll start to bubble. And ideally, if you do this, what I should have done is possibly do this first and then cut the, um, the other one out so it gives it a few minutes to cool down. But, you know, if you can give it half an hour, that, that's... That's a good thing to do. It helps the glue to set. So there's number two going on. And remember that these are all the same size. Now, I'll do some maths while I'm doing some ironing because I can do those two together, I think. How much, does anybody know how much a MIM pattern is? Can you write it in the comments for me? How much is a MIM pattern? Don't cheat and have a look. If anybody's bought one today, you'll know. And once you tell me how much a min pattern is, I'm going to ask you how much four min patterns are. £1.25. Thank you, Judy. See, it was the new person who knows all the answers. £1.25. Thank you, Vic. £1.25. So, how much, how many min patterns in a month? Four, let's say. So, how much is four times £1.25? I know you're using finger and toes. Now, Catherine, you're amazing. You're the first one. So, five pounds for four min patterns. January 2023 has how many Mondays in it? So, I want you to multiply five pound, um, one pound 25, sorry, for one min by the number of Mondays they are in January. Five. Jan, five, lovely, you can tell Jan's a teacher, albeit retired. Five in January, Liz, excellent. So how much is five times one pound 25? Six pounds 25, fabulous. Next question, I'm gonna ask Judy. Judy, how much is it for a platinum membership per month? OK, so you can see while they're answering, I've put the smaller one in the middle and then we've got room to put these sides up. Do you see why that needs to be smaller? All right. So £6.25 if you buy every MIM in January and Judy says £6.99. And what do we get for £6.99 if we join the Platinum Group? Well, I'll tell you that answer. You get two patterns from Lizzie and they're worth £5.99 each. And you get one pattern from me in the middle of the month worth five ninety nine each. Now, I'm not going to do the maths on there because I've run out of fingers and toes. But I think the answer's obvious, don't you? If you like last week's MIM and this week's MIM and you've bought the pattern, you've already spent £2.50. If you're a gold member from long ago, you'll be paying £5 a month. And if you go a gold member from not long ago, you're £6.95. I'm going to leave that with you. Three dots and see what you consider. Has anybody got anything to say? Absolute bargain. Join up to platinum. You see, that's my meaning. It, it's just all in the maths. And I know the boss is watching, but she's done those maths. She's good at it, even though she says she's not. You see? So think about it. If you have bought last week's MIM and this week's MIM, then 
if you think you're going to like more than one pattern or more than two patterns in a month, it's a gamble. Yeah, but you know, let's live life on the edge. See how you feel about it. That's the maths lesson over for today. What else would you like to learn about? Oh, sewing. OK. <laughs> OK, so in. so what we're going to do um, with this is right sides together, as you've seen. So I've got the bosal on the back, the foam on the back and the right sides together. And what I'm going to do, I've just clipped those together. They go together really well. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to put a pin there. And I'm going to put a pin there. Because what I want to make sure is that I do not stitch down this side because we're going to turn this through. So I'm going to put a pin there to make sure I stop there and a pin there and I can start there. And we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way round the cross, all the way around. OK, so what I'm going to do now is um, uh, I'm sorry if this makes you feel a bit queasy. You can look away while I just tilt the camera towards my um, sewing machine. Now, I've tried to sort out the light on the sewing machine so that it's not too bright for you. Bring that into there. How is that? Is that okay? Is this the maths our Prime Minister wants to do? <laughs> possibly, very possibly, yes. It might be an idea for me to actually stand as Chancellor next year. What do you think? <laughs> Oh, Melba's already a platinum member. See, I knew that. So that's fantastic. And I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I'm just purely doing the maths. Let you sort it out for yourself. OK, so I'm starting in the wrong place. I'm starting where the pins are. You can see where I'm starting there. And we're going to I'm going to use uh, three. Um, three millimetre stitch. So that's three on your dial or whatever you do to, to go in. I'm going to do a couple of step back stitches. I do have my walking foot on because I find with the thickness of this, it really helps. And I've got a, a stitch length of three because I don't know if everybody realises, but the thicker your fabric, the longer your stitch length needs to be because it's got to go through all there, catch the bottom and come back through. So you're less likely to slip stitches if you've got a longer stitch length. I'm going to stitch all the way down to just over that other side by a quarter of an inch. I need one more stitch. There's always one more stitch, but it's not a very long one. So I turn my stitch length down just to make sure it's in the right place for me. And then I'm going to do a couple of back stitches here as well, just to reinforce that corner and you'll see why when we come to turn it through so within quarter of an to within quarter of an inch i did one back stitch and i'm going to do a couple of stitches and another couple of back stitches just to reinforce my corner One more stitch, a little one. A couple of back stitches down the next side. Does everybody see okay? I think I've got my hand in the way, I'm so sorry. Okay. So each side of these internal corners, well, and the outside corners, to be quite honest, I've I've done a back stitch so that turning it through and trimming off the, the bulk is going to be less risky. So down the next side. Let's have a look what everybody's saying. What machine have you got? I've got, a, this is the Juki Semi Pro machine. It's the same as um, as Lizzie's old Juki. Um, she's now got the uh, UX8 as well. And I've got my Benina as well. That's the same as Abby's. So everybody thinks I'm copying. I'm not. 
It's just that those are the machines that I really like. But this one is great for um, for demonstrations because uh, it's not too it's not too big, but it's very very reliable as well. And I'm I'm so thrilled with it. But I love my banana as well. It's just one of those things, isn't it? You have to have more than one. And I know you've got fancy machines, haven't you, Catherine? <laughs> it is it is very quiet, Jackie. Yeah, it's a lovely machine. But I can't have just one because I need I need to have well I need to have a variety. We're nearly there. We've got two more sides to do. You've just purchased the DX8. I had the I had the DX7 before I had this one, and that was lovely as well. I sold that one and um, my friend bought that one from me and she absolutely loves it, yeah. So, there's go, there goes my quick unpick on the floor. So I hope I don't need it. There we go. So we've stitched all the way around the side. Now it looks like I've got black thread. I haven't, I've got purple thread. But, um, yeah, it shows up around the side, so... Yeah, you're still loving your old banana, Rosina. Uh, you know, um, Jan, who's watching tonight, has a very old banana. I think she bought it. Jan, you can um, you can um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think she was she bought it when she was 17 or 18 with her first pay packet. I'm just trimming the corners now, just to take some of that bulk away. So I've cut across, and then I'm cutting. Can you see what shape I'm making? Oh, oh dear me. Move your phone. <laughs> Can everybody see now or is that just not in the right angle? What I've done is cut it into those corners a little bit. <clears throat> so I've cut across. So I'll show it. I'll show you how I, I've done it. So I've cut across like that. And then I've cut at an angle so that the bulk is gone from the sides and that helps when you turn it through. I don't always do that when I um when I turn things through, but with the bosal, I think you do need to adjust the the thickness, the bulk there. Okay, and what I'm going to do now with let's get rid of my mess first. What I'm going to do now with um the inside, the internal corners, is I'm going to snip, so I'll show it to you. I'm going to snip right from the outside almost up to the stitches. Can you see that? All right. And then I'm going to take some of that bulk away as well. So I'll show it to you in a minute. I've got a, B sh a V shape going on there. So can you see that? I've got bits all on the other side as well. Didn't do a very good job of cleaning up, did I? I'd never make a domestic uh, goddess. Let's get those bits off the table. We don't want those underneath or inside. So I'll do that again for you. So I'm snipping into the corner just about a millimetre or so. Watch you don't slip your stitches. If you do, it's no big deal. You just go over it again and stitch again. But you can see why I've done the reinforced stitches now, can't you? So that's the second one. So snip into the corner as much as you dare almost. Snip the bulk away. And that's your corners done. All right. Righto. Who needs to be a domestic goddess when you're a sewing goddess? Oh, Pat, you, you just flatter me too much. That's just, that's just too much. I don't think my phone is down far enough, is it? Is that better? All you can see is me. Right, hopefully that's better for you. So I've cut all, oh, I haven't cut this corner, cut my bulk off. And now I'm going to turn through. And to be honest, this is the most fiddly bit of it all. Well, this and the very next bit. If I could only find my... Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, bear with me a minute. There we go. I've got it. So you can just about get your hand in here. I apologise if you can't see. But I take the furthest one away. I don't always do this, but for this one, I take the furthest one away and I bring it through. So just go slowly and steadily. And once that one's through to the middle, I go to one on the side, turn that one in on itself, and then onto the other side and turn that one in on itself. And then, I've got no plan then. I just push and pull and pull and push. Gently. Vic, you managed to cut out too much out of the corner. Just do just do um your stitching again. Just do it inside. Go all the way round again. I'll go slowly. So you can go all the way round again and it'll just be a tiny a tiny bit smaller box. It, it's really not going to matter. Don't don't fret about it. I just love that you're having a go. So, you know, that's fabulous. Now look at this, some funny goings on here. But I have my magic tool. I wish I could just go, you know, say a magic word and it would all be nice and flat, but uh, it doesn't work like that. Okay. So push those corners out with a pokey tool, whatever you've got, don't use the scissors and go gently. Although we've reinforced the corners, they're not made of steel. They are still made of fabric. So push them out. Your bosal will want to fight back, or your foam, or whatever whatever you're using. If it's a foam interfacing, it will want to fight back. But, you see, it's not too bad. If you don't cut into those corners quite enough, so Vic, you've got the right idea, but if you don't cut into those corners quite enough, you're going to have lots of, um, there's tiny little bits of pleat there, but those will come out with the iron. But if you can't get them out with your iron, you haven't cut your corners. So the best thing to do is to pop back into it and, and cut it um, a little tiny bit more if you can. So I'm just flattening all this down and then I'm going to give it a good press. You could or would, I should say, benefit with steam on this. But my, um, now you can see what's happened there. I haven't pushed that out far enough and the corner's a bit flat. So rather than go back in, all I need to do is to get a pin and very, very gently just pop the pin down inside and pull the fabrics out. Don't pull too much. And then that's a better corner. Can you see what I did there? Just get your pin and um, it has to be a strong pin because I've bent lots of them from doing that. I'm sorry I'm doing this over you. I'm just not very good at ironing with my left hand. The same's happened with that one. Look, you see that one there? See, it's a bit rounded. And if you want it a bit more, you can see that the fabric is actually, you can't see at the moment, but when you do your own, you can see that the fabric is a little bit folded inwards. So we can pop the pin down between the, the lining and the, the front and just pull those out a little bit. So that's a little tip if um, if you want your corners square. You just have to go gently. It is a little bit of a practiced skill. I've done lots of them where I've actually pulled too hard and the fabrics come out. So I'm not going to spend too much time now pressing that because we can give this a good steam afterwards. I just came back from my appointments this afternoon to find that my other iron had leaked all over my desk. So I've had a little flood in my room. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this under. This is not going to be easy, but I'm going to just use my scissors and I'm going to snip at the bosal. Now do be careful. So all I'm going to do is to snip what is the bottom layer of the bosal but just be or off the foam i keep saying bosal but i know everybody's got different makes of things so just snip some of the bulk away from the inside and it'll make it a bit easier for you, you haven't made a great job of that but it'll make it a little bit easier 
So what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in, this seam in, by, can you see what I'm doing there? I'm just cutting, not at that angle, but at that angle, just to get rid of that little bit of bulk. And then this is my secret. Okay. I've popped it in the pattern if you want to know what I've used. I've put it in the pattern so that you will know what I've used. And this is fantastic glue and it's a permanent glue. So I'm going to fold over the bosal, mm, the foam first, because this will want to fight and it will want to go in more than you want it to. So don't, don't fret about it. Give it a press. And then we're going to turn the other side over by quarter of an inch and we're going to meet them in the middle. Pop my iron out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. It's a little bit fiddly, but we're going to meet them in the middle. And I'm going to pop a little bit of the T2 glue just on the middle there for a second. Fold that in and that over and just fold it. Okay. So after a couple of seconds, half a minute maybe, that's holding. So it gives us a chance then to fold in the outside bits. I'm sorry, my fingers are in the way. I just can't do this any other way than getting my fingers in the way. Now, if you don't want to use the glue or if you don't have it or anything, just pop, um, just pop a, a quilting clip in the middle like that and then work your way along. I find my um, quick and pick is, is good for doing this because you can push it in, put another clip on it and then do your other side. So turning through and turning this under are the most difficult bits and they're not difficult. All right, oops, that's a very big one. So I've got my drawer open by the side of me and my clips are in my drawer. So rather than clip it, I'm going to show you again what I did. A little bit of glue. And you only need a tiny touch. I've just bought a new one of these because I lost my old one. Then of course I found my old one and there's still half a tube left and I've probably had that three years. And I do use it quite a lot. It's fantastic glue and um, it will stick metal, you know, if you've got one of those purse clasps and you're making. It's um, put the lid of my HT2 back on in between stages. Yes, absolutely, because it runs out for a pastime, doesn't it? All right, so make sure you put it on because as you see, it will run out. So, so fold that over. This is probably not as neat as I've done the last one. But then if you want to, you can pop your clips back on just while that glue sets. But it really does only take seconds because what we're going to do now is we're going to um, top stitch all the way around the outside. If you've glued that, then you can top stitch at the quarter of an inch. If you haven't glued it, I would top stitch at more like an eighth of an inch. But you just have to be careful because it is um, it's quite bulky, obviously. All right. So I'm going to top stitch all the way around and I'm going to start the other side. Um, I'm going to start here so that. Um, and I'm going to do just under the quarter of an inch. Right. Put you straight. How's that? Is that okay? Yep. So I'm going to start just anywhere down the one side and my stitch length is on about, it's on three still, so we can leave it on three. Go over your corner by whatever your seam allowance is so that you can have it nice and neat. And this is again where your um, walking foot will, let me put my mess out of the way, will um, come into its own because it really does help with the bulk. 
and I don't know about anybody else but my walking foot is actually a quarter of an inch it's dead on a quarter of an inch I can't move the needle on this machine it's just a straight stitch only and when I put my walking foot on I get exactly a quarter of an inch so I love it to be honest So we're going all the way around the outside and this will neaten it all up and it will also help to stabilize those sides as well it seems to make it stronger for some reason just reinforces the sides so i can take those clips off now and that that glue will stay there and nobody will even know it's there One more stitch, always one more stitch. Now I'm not saying rush out and buy Gutemann glue. But if you want a really good glue, it's the one that I use all the time. If you want a, um, a non-permanent glue, then don't use it because it is permanent but it will wash so okay is everybody all right that's a great view good thank you good view can you bring your machine in oh i did didn't i just after you said it <laughs> okay so we've top stitched i'm just going to Trim those threads and you can see that that's lovely and neat all the way around then. Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side for now because that's our base and sides all done. And we're going to bring in um, the straps because next we are making the straps. So there's our, there's our lovely. our lovely base and sides and we're going to bring in the straps I've done three of the straps for you because I didn't think you'd want me to go through it four times and I'm going to use now some oh and I forgot to put it in the plastic bag if Jackie if Jackie um Thomas sees this she'll really tell me off because I forgot to put it in a plastic bag so I've had to waste some of it it goes dry on the end of the strap on the short end of each strap I'm going to put some quilters tape. If people aren't familiar what quilters tape is, it's double sided. So this is sticky and this is um, like a, I was going to say like a plasticky paper backing. Paper possibly rather than plastic. Well, waxed paper. Put your, now if you haven't got quilters tape, you can just turn this over by quarter of an inch the lovely thing about quilters tape is it's a quarter of an inch so I don't have to measure it I just turn it over so that's that bit and it keeps it nice and so take your quilters tape and give it a, a press with your thumbnail and then the back will peel off so it's stuck to the fabric and it's sticky on the other side so you can see what i'm doing there i'll show it you that way i'm just turning over either way my fingers are getting in the way aren't they but it makes it easy to um to measure a quarter of an inch and it makes it stick so um it makes it stay where it's put so then we're going to fold that in half give it a quick press so all we want is a crease down the center so we know we're doing it uh, know where we're going and we're folding the outside edges both of them into the center it's easy on on a short piece it's a little bit more challenging on a longer piece so you have to have six fingers no you don't but um you know probably would be good to have an extra finger because you know we could probably use it couldn't we am i rambling am i rambling it's the best quilter's tape is yes absolutely so i then tend to put um 
a clip on the end and a clip in the middle because I'm going to sew around oh it's a bit of thread I'm going to sew top stitch around all four is this is not going in anywhere this is a totally separate one so you need to have your inside your your, your ends done to the inside so that um you haven't got your raw edges because it's not going into any seam or anything it's going to show so i'm going to top stitch all the way around and i've done it with the other ones so i'm going to put it back to my machine for you okay i don't think that's a bad view start off at the end and my stitch length is on three again and this time we're going to go as as close to the edge as we can and I don't know whether you've seen there that I always I always start off with the um, with the folded edge uh, the two folds because I can manipulate those so that they're on top of one another and then when I do the other one it just automatically goes flat and I do the other side. So coming up to the edge again, turn around and back down the other side. And then just join up the sewing on the other side. Okay. Whoops. Oh! See? Blooming thing. Right. Okay. Who's awake? <laughs> Who is awake? You caught a glimpse of everything then, didn't you? I showed everybody my mess this morning. Didn't expect it to be seen again tonight. Okay, I'm going to have to get a better tripod, aren't I? That's the second time I've done that now. So, here is our strap. I have top stitch all the way around, as you can see, and trimmed off the ends. Here are the other three straps. So, we've got four straps, because we've got four sides. On those, you can see that I've put the... Um, the poppers so on that one that one and that one so the pattern will tell you exactly where to put your poppers and I've got my poppers here I think and my little tool for putting my poppers in okay so I'm just going to measure and mark how far in I want to go. The pattern will tell you how far in to go. And I just put a little dot. Same on the other side. Can you see me? Is it all right? I'm putting on a little dot. So I've got little dots there. I don't know if you can see those. Just a little pen dot. Doesn't matter what you do with it with because we're going to cover it up now. I'm going to use my, my hole punch. Didn't do very well, I don't think. There we go. And take a back. Now, sometimes when you do straps, one side is neater than the other. But this one seems to be the same. So choose your neatest side. And your neatest side, your disc will go on. Okay? I hope you can see that. So that's the neatest side your disc will go on. And then on the other side... It doesn't matter which which um, back you use, as long as you use the same one. Now, on this one, I've used what I call the top hat. As if you notice, I'll put them on here for you because they'll show up. If you notice, we've got a top hat, and I call that a rubber ring. Can you see that? That's a rubber ring, and that's a top hat because it's thicker. And one sits inside the other one. So on my other straps, I've all put all top hats. So on these two, I'm going to find my top hats. There they are. 
and I'm going to put these on them. So I have my disc underneath and then on the spike I'm going to put that and if you use your um, fingernails, I don't know where my other disc has gone now, did I put one in? Maybe not. Um, the hole didn't go through, that's better. Um, if you just pop, there's your disc, there's your spike there, you can't see that very well because it's, um, because it's green, but there's your spike coming through that edge, okay? And top hat on top, and if you push, I push with my two fingers, then that will stay there. And then I bring in my tool, and the disc goes to the cup on the bottom, and then this goes to the top. And when I'm holding it, but not pressing it, I can move that around so that my my um, disc or the button or whatever you want to call it is sitting nicely and then squeeze hard. And then that will collapse the little spike in the centre and we'll be able to join it to the other half of the popper. So pop it in, give it a little twizzle and then squeeze hard. That one I did better than this one, so let's do this one again. There we go. So those are in and that's our straps done. So there are our four straps all ready to go. Then we need to measure on here where our poppers are going to go on here. So it's lots of poppers for you. So if you've never used poppers before and you make this um you make this project, then um what a great um what a great way to practice. So it tells us where to put our little marks on the pattern. And so we want we want some close to this corner and we want some close to the top corners. So on the pattern it's the same length from there as it is from there and the same width from an outside corner in. So that side and this side we're having the poppers at the bottom. Does that make sense? Poppers at the bottom for opposite sides and that will go there. So poppers towards the inside. So I'm making a mark where they want to go. And I think what I'll do is put those on first because then you won't be confused. So where we are here, where we've put our mark, make a hole. And this time the disc of the popper is going on the inside of your bag. Now, um, it doesn't really matter, but I just thought when I was making it up, it, it was the way it naturally wanted to go. And this time as well, we've got a rubber ring. Can you see that there? So there's our spike there coming through from the other side. Now whether I can angle it properly for you to see. Yeah, you can see that spike. And then this time I've got a rubber ring. So I'm putting the rubber ring on and pressing that down. And I get my tool. Give it a wiggle. And give it a press. Pop over to the other side. So this is the inside. Make my hole. Push the spike through. So this is going to be a little bit boring now while I do these eight. Because what you need is eight pairs. So eight with your top hats on. And eight with your rubber rings on. So discs inside, rubber rings outside. So this is the last one for the inner corners. So this will come up from the bottom. Okay. So put the disc in at the back or on the lining and Pop her in at the top. Oh, I want those hole punches and that. <laughs> well, if you go onto Lizzie's website, 
uh, no, onto Lizzie's um, Amazon shop. Maybe one of the um, the girls will put cam snaps for poppers. You can use an old kitchen mat. Yeah, you can. Um, I think I bought these, this silicon mat, I think I bought from, what's the kitchen shop called? The very famous kitchen shop. I can't think now. Lakeland. Lakeland. I'm not very good at putting the rubber rings on. They don't want to hold down sometimes. So they keep popping off. I'm going to find another one. There we go. That's better. So if you find it difficult to use them, I, I press down on the desk rather than holding it up. And then you don't seem to ex need to exert so much pressure. So you can see that I've got one there, one there. And on the opposite side, I've got one there and one there. So they're both in the same place. Now, these two sides, they're going on the tops. So I'll turn it over there so that I can see where I'm measuring. And we're measuring down from the outer corner this time. So this is one without a popper on. No popper at all yet on this one. And we're going from the outer corner downwards where we went from the inner corner upwards. Is everybody happy with that? So, as I was saying, if you go on to Lizzie's um, Amazon shop, you will find that um, you can get the hole punch. I think Lizzie's was a threader one, but um, I don't know what make this was. A threader's one, I think it was, but I'm not sure. But you will find them in the shop. So, disc on the outside. No, disc on the inside. Rubber ring on the outside. This rubber ring looks a little bit... Just make sure you've got it in the right place before you squeeze. If it doesn't go down with pushing it. Yeah, that was right. And the little spike in the middle has collapsed under the pressure. And then that's what allows the two pieces to, um, to snap together. Had to take out one bad popper. Could you not repress it? I wondered what you were asking me to repress then. I thought you were asking me to repress spending or enthusiasm. <laughs> but I mean, you do mean repress, don't you? Yeah, you can sometimes repress them and they'll work. So before you struggle on taking it out, try pressing it again. That's a good tip. OK, so there's the ones at the top. There's the ones at the bottom. We just have to do this side now. So these are at the top again. Now, on the popper, on the, on the popper, on the pattern, I tell you that you could put extra poppers on the corners if you wanted to. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. You don't need it for strength or for stability. But if you want it to look nice or to look different, then I'll show you what I mean when I put it all together. Because we've now finished. Just these couple of poppers. We've got two minutes to eight. I'll show you how to put it together and we finished. So, one popper. This little box would be so cute filled with Easter eggs, wouldn't it? It would be so cute filled with whatever you want to fill it with. I put flowers in mine because I wanted to cheer me up. Um, and because we're kind of on a bit of a theme of yellow and flowers and what have you, just to cheer us up in January. Um, so, I love my, my, my primrose yellow one. So there we're done. We're finished. All we have to do now, which will take us seconds, I am going to, you see what I'm doing? I'm folding over one corner at a time and giving it a press. It'll just have a little bit of memory then. But what you can do now is to steam this. Just be careful of your poppers. But you could give this a steam iron. But as I've fallen out of favour with my iron, because it, um, and then we just put the poppers on. So I've made two purple ones. So I put a popper on there. I pull this up and I join the popper to the other one. That's why the ones at the bottom are opposite each other. And then put a popper on there. Pull that up, bring it round the outside. 
and pop it there. Then take my green ones, pop it there, whoops, bring it round the outside and put it on the next one and a popper there and bring it round and it's on the next size side and then you have your perfect little box what do you think what do you think your pot plant looked lovely in the sample photograph yes well it'll go in this one as well <laughs> but it's the wrong color entirely but any pot plant i've got a candle here as well and although you know you'd have to be very careful burning a candle in it it will go in just to look nice so anything will go in there i've got if you want it just for your sewing room those will go in there that will go in there that will go in there that will go in there look there's loads of space so whatever you want to use it for you use it for if you want to put things in there to gift easter eggs would be fabulous but it's gorgeous isn't it i really love it and um i'm really pleased with the way it's turned out let's pop you up and tilt you the right way so i can see you so here she is and i like that with the with the um the lining um, on the straps as well, do you? Looks good, doesn't it? I like it. And then, so we've got two now. So this one, if I wanted to, I could pop it in the other one. So I could make a set and keep them all in one box for, I don't know, whatever you'd use a set for. You use a set of Tupperware, so why not? so i hope everyone's enjoyed that i've really enjoyed this evening even though i dropped you on the floor i dropped my unpicker on the floor i hate gravity i hate it but where would we be without it on the ceiling <laughs> so it's a minute past eight enjoy the rest of your evening have a lovely week and we'll see you next monday lizzie's doing the mim next monday um if you're a member of the group, be that gold and oh, it used to be silver before that or platinum, we'll see you on Thursday night as normal. And I'm sure Lizzie's got a lot of lovely things in store for us on Thursday night. So that'll be really nice. And um, yeah, so we'll see you. I'll be back with Mid-Month Madness uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, so um, there we go. Thank you ever so much for watching. It's been really lovely to see you all and I hope to see you again soon. Take care and good night. Bye.